Hi, my name is Naj, and I'm coming to you from Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm sending you the Seattle Unity Community, All My Love. The name of this song is Dance to the Music You Hear. Every single day shines like it's your day. Trust your heart and feel the power flow within your soul. For this new day, dance to the music that you hear. Make resolutions, cause life brings solutions. Daily give thanks for what you have. Know within your soul, you are blessed to dance to the music that you hear. Our journey may be long, too long Life may throw some curveballs at us But we'll dance, we'll fight We'll step aside and keep pressing on Keep moving on, keep striving on We'll climb our hills, push past walls Knowing that this vision is ours Life is like a school Testing what we choose Choose better ways Reach higher grades See brighter days Hope every single day Shines like it's your day Trust your heart and feel the power Flow within your soul For this new day Dance to the music that you hear Look around you this year The answers for you are so near Just shift the mind and center the eye You'll solve the puzzle, win the prize, give love a try Hope every single day shines like it's your day Trust your heart and feel the power Flow within your soul For this new day dance to the music that you hear Make resolutions Cause life brings solutions Daily give thanks for what you have Know within your soul You are blessed to dance to the music that you hear Just dance to the music that you hear Just march to the beat of your drum Now it don't matter if anybody else hears it It don't matter if anybody else feels it You just dance Dead, 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 dance Dance to the music that you hear Dance to the music that you hear Good morning and welcome to Seattle Unity. This is uh, the title of the talk today is Guardians of the Soul, which is our animals. So Hazel and I would like to welcome you to Seattle Unity's online Sunday service. My name is Reverend Karen Lindvig. So we are going to bless our animals today during the talk as well as the fellowship that follows. So I would invite you before we begin to turn your attention within as we know this truth. That is that there is but one presence and one power in my life and in the universe. God the good, dog the good, omnipotence. So we breathe in this awareness. And may we find joy and gratefulness and happiness in our day as we go forth today. And it is so. Amen.
silence on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as creator, united all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every breath I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. A Blessing for a Beloved Animal by Bob Hostetler Blessed is all creation. Blessed is every living thing with which the waters teem, and every winged bird, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals. It is all good. Thank you, creation, for each animal for its life that comes from you and for the love and joy it brings. Blessed are all creatures and let our loving care for them be a reflection of your loving nature. We praise the beauty of all creatures. Amen. Since we're celebrating animals this morning, our meditation is going to focus on fish and the you know how relaxing it is to see and watch fish we bless the creatures of the ocean so let's just take a moment as we prepare to move in that we do bless all the creatures of the sea and we are so grateful to live in the northwest and to live with the beautiful orca and the different whales and all the wildlife that's up here so i invite you to take a deep breath and just Relax and step into this moment, this moment of wonder and peace.
is your soul Here is the time Here is the goal Here is your gift Here is your light There is the moon And this is the night What's your desire, dear? Write it down here. Make sure it's clear. This is your prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now don't you be afraid. No, 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 no. Dreams only breathe, but they're in your body. Hold that picture in your mind Now close your eyes And realize You'll be alright Now let go And so And just let go Go and realize you're gonna be all right. Just let go gonna be all right so just spread your wings and fly away just spread your wings and soar just spread your wings and fly away just spread your wings and soar So, and realize you're gonna be In religious life, the first Sunday of October is regulated to St. Francis. He is the patron saint of animals and ecology. So churches around the country and even Europe typically use this Sunday to bless animals. And I wanted to begin with just a small portion of the canticle of Brother Sun, Sister Moon from St. Patrick. So we use this as our invocation into this uh, talk today. Be praised, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially through my Lord, Brother Son, who brings the day, and you give light through him. And he is beautiful and radiant in all his splendor. Of you, Most High, he bears the likeness. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon. And the stars in heaven, you form them clear and precious and beautiful. And I will um, add more of that toward the end of this talk. But we get the feeling from St. Francis that he's connected to nature. He's connected to the elements and he is connected to the earth. So even though we're home, and we're not in the church to bless the animals. We're going to bless our animals from home today. And if you are watching this live, I invite you to bring your dog or your cat or your bird or your guinea pig or a picture of your animal um, to 
our fellowship hour, which immediately follows this service, and you can find a link on the website. So since COVID, many of us have gotten to spend a lot more time with our pets. And you may have had the experience of getting interrupted while doing meetings, right? And I think some of the funniest ones have been watching pets um, of reporters because reporters are presenting the news and it has to be serious and they have to look a certain way. And um, there's a, a YouTube clip of, of all of them connected since COVID and they're really funny. You know, one guy is having a serious conversation in England and a bird one of his, his bird flies on the top of his head and lands. You know, people are trying to be very professional and their dog walks on screen or their cat, their cat like moves right in front of the camera. And I think what it's done is it's brought an earthiness and, and even a sense of humor to um, what's normally a very serious thing. And I think the other thing that it's done is it's cut through our work personas even more than what they ever were, because it's very hard to present an image, you know, when your cat or your dog is, is acting out or your child, right? So what is it about our pets that gets into our hearts? And I think it's because they're always there. Um, again, especially now during COVID, they're, we're with them too, 24-7. And I think that's why it's, it's so hard when they die because their spirit fills the entire house. And when they're gone, it just feels so empty, right? One of the most difficult things to do is after the death of a pet is to put away the water bowl and the leash and the, you know, the collar and you know, just their toys and all of that stuff to put it away. Um, you know, they, they just really get into our hearts because I think it gives us something, someone to take care of so that we can step out of ourselves um, so much and they become a part of our family. So it is difficult when we lose them. And I know that one of the things that I've done to commemorate the loss of my pets is that uh, by taking their um, tag and then making a Christmas ornament out of it so that at Christmas it's like oh yes they're still with us they're still a part of the family I think that they're even more than just part of the family I think that our animals are guardians of the soul whether it's a soul on a, a individual level or collective as the family I know that I was lucky throughout my childhood to have lots of pets. You know, we had guinea pigs and birds and cats and dogs and a duck and, you know, just, just all these uh, other pets that just made my life so rich, you know, including my favorite cat that I was given when I was seven and she lived till I was 20. And she was just this witness to my life. You know, she was, she was my friend and she you know, really got me through some some tough experiences in my life. And yeah, they're a lot of work, but, but they are worth it. And, and right now, I know that I'm so touched when I see videos of toddlers and babies with their dog or with their cat, you know, it's, it's, they're playing together, or they're taking a nap together. You know, it's like, it's their babies or their child's first friend. So there are many benefits to living with an animal. And if you have a dog, especially, exercise is one of the benefits because we have to go out and we have to, to walk them. So it gets us out of our routine. They provide companionship. You know, they're, they're with us, like I said, every day. They reduce stress because they can make us laugh. They want to play, right? It's like, how often have you had a dog or even a cat that brings you a toy is to say, come on, let's let's uh, take a break here. Let's lighten this up and let's play a little bit. Um, they also can help you make friends, especially dogs. Again, cats, you can't really take for a walk. But there are many times when I'm walking on the Burt Gilman and stop and talk to somebody if they have a similar dog and we chat for a while. And of course, I go to the Magnuson Dog Park frequently, and it's interesting, and my dog is actually listening to me, and as she hears me say dog park, her head is, is turning. 
Um, but what's interesting to me about the dog park is they got the big dog park and they got the little and the big dogs are running and they're playing in the water and, you know, they're roughhousing and then, and their owners are with them. And then you go to the little dog park and the little dogs may be playing or not. Um, but all the people stand around and chat. We all just sit around and chat. So it's like the little dog park and then there's the big dog park and Hazel is listening to me and, and being very hopeful. Um, they can teach your kids how to be responsible, right? If you have a, a child and they have to take care of a dog or cat, it also teaches them about loving kindness and compassion about how to take care of another being. So there's so many um, benefits that we get from, from having animals live with us. So many people are asked, so are you a dog or are you a cat person? Well, hunch dot com polled over 200,000 people to uh, see if they were dog or cat people and what the, what the difference was in them. And this is what they found. They said that 15% of dog people are more likely to be extroverts and 30% of dog people are more likely to enjoy slapstick humor and impressions. Seems like a funny question to ask, but they did. Whereas cat people are 11% more inclined to be introverts and they're 21 percent more likely to enjoy ironic humor and puns also says that they have more master's degrees so there you go <laughs> so we've heard all kinds of stereotypes about dogs and cats right that dogs come when you call them cats take a message and say they'll get back to you later dogs will let you uh give them a bath without trying to take a contract out on you <laughs> Dogs will bark to wake you up if there's a fire in your house. Well, cats will gently sneak out the back door. And dogs will tilt their heads and listen when you talk, where cats will yawn and close their eyes. So those are some of the experiences that we get with our dogs and our cats. And for those of you who are one or the other, I'm sure you can relate. But again, I want to go back to this idea that our pets are guardians of the soul, whether the soul of the individual or the soul of the family. So there is a, a story about a cat and his name is Oscar. And he lived at the Steerhouse Nursing and Rehabilitation Center in Rhode Island. He was adopted in 2005. And the reason they adopted him was they wanted to make the residency seemed more personal. It was mainly for dementia uh, patients. But they thought, well, if we have a cat, it'll make it more homey around here. Well, the problem is Oscar was very aloof. Like he didn't really want anybody to touch him. He didn't hang out. He'd walk up to a patient's room, he'd sniff, and then he'd just keep going. Until he started to go into the rooms of people who only had a few hours to live. He became like this grim reaper cat. And if they would close the door and lock him out, he would just scratch at the door and, you know, until they let him in. Dr. David Doss described the cat's behavior in a book that he published in 2010 called Making Rounds with Oscar, the Extraordinary Gift of an Ordinary Cat. And here is an excerpt of how Oscar ministered or was a guardian angel to one of these patients. So a nurse walked into the room to check on her patient and she pauses to notice that Oscar is there. Concerned, she grabbed Mrs. K's chart off the medical records and called her family to come right away. Within a half an hour, the family started to arrive and Oscar had not moved. Instead, he was purring gently, cuddling Mrs. K, nuzzling her next to her. So the grandson asks his mom, hey, what's this cat doing here? And the mom says he's here to help grandma get to heaven. 30 minutes later, Mrs. K takes her last earthly breath and with this, Oscar sits up, looks around, then departs the room so quietly that the grieving family barely notices. They said that there are more than 50 occurrences 
of this experience with this cat. So we know that our animals can see and sense things that we can't, and that there is a divine president, a divine presence within them, that they have this connection with the universe, even domesticated animals. I have had the experience, I don't mean to uh, lean on cats so much this morning, but seems to be what's coming up. I had the experience of having a cat as my labor coach. So I had a cat named Eli, um, and he was, you know, a constant companion. He was with me in my first ministry in Olathe, Kansas. I literally used to bring him with me to the church, and, you know, we would drive in the car back and forth together. And when I was going to have my son, my first child, I wanted to have him at home. And we wanted to have a water birth, but I didn't have a bathroom big enough and or a tub big enough. So the midwife had a, a big plastic tub. She goes, don't worry about it. You can fill it up and then, you know, you can give birth to the baby. We'll put it in the living room or something. So I went into labor and uh, my husband was trying to fill up the tub and get the water hot, which left me alone in the living room in labor. Now, what I didn't know is that if you wanna make labor go faster, walk around. If you don't, sit down. But anyway, I didn't know, so I'm walking around the living room by myself in the circle, and Eli came in, and he thought we were playing a game. So he started ricocheting off the walls, and then when a labor pain would hit, I'd hit the floor on all fours and then start howling, and he, jumped down and he uh, stood across from me and he would put his forehead right against my forehead and look into my eyes. And as I was howling with a labor pain, he howled or meowed with me. And so it was like, Rah! and then I'd get up, walk around, he'd bounce off the walls, bang, bang, bang. I'd hit the floor again, back to forehead to forehead, eye to eye, meowing it up. And we did this for at least 20 minutes, if not longer, um, until my husband came back and we're like, you know what, tub's not gonna work, let's let's uh, move to another room to have this child. And, and, it, and it was just wonderful. I mean, it was great because I was in such an animal state and he was connecting with me in that place, in that animalistic experience of the meow of, of, of giving birth. And I'm sure that you have had your own uncanny and amazing stories about animal encounters. I know I'm not the only one, whether it be your pets or whether it be, you know, animals in the wild. And speaking of animals in the wild, it's important that we also acknowledge them today because many of them are in danger due to the fires and other forms of extinction. And so when we do our blessing, we, we need to include them in more so really than, than our own pets because they have a pretty good life, most of them. It's also important that we acknowledge the animals that we eat and use for food um, and to pray, you know, for an ease of suffering. And, you know, if, if, you're, if you're not a vegetarian, consider being uh, going meatless, you know, one or two days a week, just to give it a try, just to kind of, you know, create some space and, and release that a little. So whether you're connected to a horse or the birds in your yard or your cat or your dog, I invite you right now to go and get your pets, go and get a picture of a pet or a statue and, and use them as a conduit for your prayers right now. So I'm gonna call Hazel. Hazel, you want a treat? Come here, come here, you want a treat? Okay, good girl. So this is Hazel and I know many of you have met her on different occasions. And of course I have to bribe her. She is three years old and uh, she is a Maltese poodle and she is, got, I've got to say, she's the funniest dog I have ever had in my life and I've had a lot of dogs. Uh, she was bred to hang out with royalty. I know it's hard to chew when, when I'm holding you up in the air like this, I know, I get it, okay. So I hope you have your dog or your cat or a picture of one. And so I'm gonna invite you just to put your hand on your pet, and use your pet as a conduit for all other animals. And so right now, 
as we always do affirm that there is one presence and one power in the universe, and that presence and power is God the good. And so through this animal right now, through my beautiful Hazel, through your beautiful animal, we see that Hazel and your animal is connected with all other creatures of the earth, whether they fly or whether they swim or whether they uh, walk on four legs. We bless each animal. We bless you and we give thanks for the companionship and the joy that you bring to us. May you be healed. May you have a long life. We bless all the animals that are in the wild, from the squirrels to the deer to the bear to the wolf. We, we, the wolves, we hold you in our prayers as well. For all those who have suffered and died in the fires, we bless your spirit as it goes forward, as it continues to live. For all animals who are suffering, whether they be domesticated or wild, through Hazel, through your own pet, as I bless and love her, may that love, may that blessing go to each animal that is in need. But mostly, thank you, Hazel, for being such a good dog. Thank you for being in my life. Thank your animal for being in your life. And I wanna move back to the canicle. Praised be you, my Lord, through brother wind, and through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather through which you give sustenance to your creatures. Praised be you, my Lord, through sister water, which is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praised be you, my Lord, through brother fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. And praised be you, my Lord, through sister mother earth, who sustains us and governs us and who produces varied fruits with colored flowers and herbs. And blessed are all the creatures of the earth and for this awareness, and in the name and through the power of dog and cat, it is so. My name is Greg Rupert. I've been a member of Seattle Unity for 12 years. I invite you to join me in practicing the law of giving and receiving through our generosity. As an eight year member of the finance team, I'm acutely aware of how important your continued support is to make this spiritual community possible. You can give by text using the number on the screen, and I won't be offended if you turn away now to do that very thing. Or you can donate through our website at seattleunity.org. And while you're on the website, I invite you to check out the easy recurring donation feature too, which is what I do. For now, Hold the spirit of your gift in your heart as we affirm, I give willingly, joyfully, and lovingly, knowing that God is the constant source of my supply. I give with graciousness and receive with gratitude. We breathe that in and we dedicate and consecrate these gifts to the will, the work, and the way of the living spirit of truth. May each gift return to the giver a millionfold. And so it is. Amen. So let us now close with our prayer of protection together. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Many blessings to you, and may you enjoy a beautiful week. Take care. Just march to the beat of your drum. Now it don't matter if anybody else hears it. It don't matter if anybody else feels it. You just dance. Dead, 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 dance. 
Dance to the music that you hear. Dance to the music that you hear.